Seen as Alba Tainen is a barrister, social justice activist, and founder of Landmark Hotels Company. In 2014, and for four consecutive years, she was chosen as the young global leader, sorry, as one of Forbes' most powerful Arab women. She is also a young global leader with the World Economic Forum and a board member of Shabake, the Palestinian Policy Network. Mary has been a political activist for Palestinian rights for over 20 years and founded the Palestine Legal Aid Fund, which seeks to support legal action in defense of Palestinian rights. Okay, so my remarks today are entitled Reflections on Refugees and a Model Towards Empowerment. I am fortunate to spend a lot of my time in the Jarash refugee camp, known as the Gaza camp. Last uh, week I was there on the day, you remember, it was very dusty, it was hard to breathe. These are some of the photos of the camp taken by my colleague Mahmoud, who's right there. In the duration of one day, I gained some limited insight into the lives of three different residents of the camp. I'll quickly share them with you. I support a lot of social impact projects in the camp that try and improve the lives of those residing there. So that day we had organized some eye tests to help correct any potential vision impairments. We had set up an examination room for the doctor to see the patients. I happened to be in the room looking at this selection of glasses when the doctor who was examining a 23-year-old woman who had never had two minutes, the doctor told her that she was severely short-sighted with the prescription of more than negative four. I paused and I remembered that I too am a negative four, but find it impossible to function without my glasses. I thought to myself, how did this young lady function during the day? How did she not realize? Did she not have headaches? And what would have become of her if we hadn't been volunteering that day? Shortly after, I met another woman that I know from the camp. I don't know her well, we've said hellos a few times before. That day she looked pale, almost yellow. Her eyes were swollen. She beckoned me to the side to talk to me discreetly. We walked to a narrow street in the camp like this, filled with garbage. You see, because of UNRWA funding cuts, the daily garbage collectors have been fired. With an intense look in her eyes, she told me that she just needed help with her roof. I told her, with your roof? And then I remembered how many thousands of, house, thousands of houses in the camp don't have adequate roofing. Every time it rains or it's windy, the houses are exposed to the elements and everything they, that they have gets ruined. Can't her husband fix it, I thought. And she told me with tears running down her face that he had totally given up hope after years of not finding a job. Later that day, I saw another woman who I knew. We've been supporting her with English classes. She was a very bright girl, usually very upbeat, but I could tell that day that something was bothering her. I nudged her to see if she wanted to share, and she told me she was pregnant. And I said, congratulations, that's so wonderful. But she looked so unhappy. I said, what's wrong? And she shared with me that so many members of her family have a genetic disease. I told her, don't worry, just do the tests, do the scab like I did, I have three kids. And then she reminded me that Gaza refugees simply do not have access to this routine medical care. Needless to say, that day, I found it difficult to breathe and it wasn't because of the dust. It was because these stories are the absolute norm in the lives of the Gaza refugees. For, th for those of you who are unfamiliar with the camp, allow me to give you some background. The Gaza camp was created in 1968 to host around 10,000 refugees from Palestine. Today, the camp population is estimated at over 50,000 people in the same space that was allocated in 1968 on less than one square kilometer. That's 0.75 square kilometers. 
Do you know that the campus where we are today is 1.2 square kilometers? That's bigger than the Gaza camp that houses 50,000 people. The average income for a family is $7 a day, including aid. 64% of the refugees in the camp live on $2 a day, including aid. Unemployment is over 43%, with most jobs being temporary in nature, with peaks of over 80% in the case of women. Gaza camp residents are Palestinian refugees without a national ID number, without a Hamatani. They face several constraints not faced by other Palestinian refugees who are Jordan nationals. For example, I would love to be able to hire people from the Gaza camp in my hotel, and I simply am not permitted to do so. And that's because several job opportunities, including those jobs in the public sector, are simply not available to Gaza refugees. Not to mention there is no access to state universities or government health, health insurance. As in the case as all Palestinian refugees, these Palestinian refugees have the right to return to their homeland according to international law. I will not dwell on this issue, but here is a visual from Visualizing Palestine that shows the return is not only a legal and political right, but it's also practically possible. My time with refugees affirms to me again and again that the issues of Palestinian refugees should be brought back to the forefront until it is resolved on principles of justice and international law. I firmly believe that we need to reposition the right of return as the heart of the Palestinian national struggle. But as we pursue our struggle, is it acceptable for Palestinian refugees to be living the lives that I described earlier? It certainly isn't for me, and that's why I spend so much time doing projects aimed at improving the lives of refugees. The one I will speak about today is the Social Enterprise Project, commonly known as SEP, that operates from within the Gaza Jadash refugee camp. I speak about it as a brand ambassador and partner, and I choose to mention it because I have seen with my own eyes the positive impact it has had on the women in the Gaza camp. It by no means replaces the legal and political struggle, but it is a model that can bring some economic relief to those who need it the most. SEP is a social impact business which employs hundreds of female artists from the camp. They make luxury fashion and home accessories for the upscale global market, like that scarf that I was wearing and the bag I was carrying. Here are a selection of summer products, for example. And here is a selection of home products. We operate from within the camp itself. We have a SEP house, which is like a workshop, and we have the SEP Academy, which is where the women are trained and where we do all our social impact activities. One reason SEP is so important is because it provides jobs to people who otherwise have very limited job opportunities. Here is some coverage from The Guardian about SEP, and the headline states, Asma has been a refugee for 36 years. Now a fashion startup has offered a lifeline. Indeed, it has been a lifeline. I had a video from CNN that I was going to show you, but in the, I don't think I have time, so I'm not going to do that. Um, striving for positive impact is a cornerstone of SEP, and these tables show part of our impact assessment model. Here we've taken a sample of 100 ladies and asked them anonymously to give us feedback on these indicators, including debt, school fees, medical issues, etc. This was in 2016 on the left, and that's in 2017 on the right. You can see from the figures that even in the course of one year, there's been a significant improvement in terms of their well-being. And if I can draw quickly your attention, to the question if they felt depression before working and if their symptoms improved after working, you will see a huge improvement. In addition, SEP is continuously engaged in social impact activities that aim to improve the quality of life of those we work with. Here are some highlights, which include health advice sessions, 
coding, cooking, financial planning, and so on. A lot of these activities take place in partnership with the American Community School in Amman, with students often initiating the projects. Here are some recent projects which include the establishment of a library, which we did, which uh, also hosts a lot of activities, an IT lab, which has enabled virtual English lessons to take place between students in Amman and students in the camp, and self-defense classes for the children of the camp. Apart from my involvement with the social impact side of SEP, I've developed a partnership with uh, our company, Landmark Hotels, and we've opened a SEP boutique in the Landmark lobby, which you can see in this picture. We also have wall arts uh, in the new rooms of the hotel, which, uh, and in each new room we tell the detailed story of each artist. We also have a permanent photo exhibition of the Gaza camp, so that guests can see the conditions of the camp. These photos are also done by my colleague Mahmoud. And all in all, these efforts assist in telling the story of the Palestinian refugee to a diverse audience. Okay. As you can see, the SEP model has transformed the lives of hundreds of women in the camp. On the left is Nawal. She's the project manager of the camp. She's a great leader, and SEP has enabled her to rebuild her home. Dua, in the middle, is the head of social impact. She is creative, and because of SEP, has been able to pay her university fees. Asma, on the right, is the quality control manager, and I just want to share her exact words with you translated into English. I quote, We tried very hard to find work before SEP came to the camp. I tried working with several projects, but there was no follow through. We never found someone to help and support us market our project. There was no marketing, no capital, and we couldn't go outside the camp for work. SEP came to us, it gave us work where we live, and even from our own houses, unquote. The importance of providing work in the camp, or the opportunity to work from home, is of utmost importance for these women in particular, who are often running the household, taking care of multiple children, and caring for their often unemployed husbands. SEP is an example of what a positive impact, a simple model of economic empowerment can have. There on the right is a photo of when the SEP artist came to the Landmark Hotel a few years ago when we opened the SEP boutique. A rare opportunity to leave the camp, sadly, but an important day nonetheless when they saw their work on display and they were appreciated and recognized as the wonderful and talented individuals that they are. So I will end, because time is brief, on very brief reflections related to the title of this conference, Where To? Where To? On the refugee front. I think there are five tracks. First, we must continue to develop similar models of economic empowerment like SEP for both women and men to improve the conditions of refugees until their rights are realized. Second, we need to advocate for rights for Palestinian refugees in the Arab world like the full right to work for Gaza refugees in all sectors. Three, we need to resist the US Zionist campaign to dismantle UNRWA, which has been further evidenced by the American funding cuts to the organization. Whether we like it or not, the fact is we need to sustain UNRWA because the basic human needs it fulfills on a massive scale. In addition, UNRWA symbolizes the unresolved political fate of millions of Palestinians and it ensures that they remain visible to the international community. In recent months, I've been very active in galvanizing support, uh, support for UNRWA, and I believe it's a matter of urgency to continue to support UNRWA. Fourth, we need to continue to use BDS as one of many strategies, with a focus not only on the strategy of boycott, divestment, and sanctions, but also with a greater focus, if I may, on the goals of freedom, equality, and the right of return. I'll end by saying, as I said earlier, my fifth point, we need to reposition the refugees as central to our narrative and movement because they are the heart of our struggle and the reason why we must continue to fight for justice. Thank you.